The X32 Edit software is the best way to control an X32 console without standing in front of the X32 console. Quick note that the Midas M32 and the Behringer X32 run the same operating system with different logos. So the M32 Edit software, which is actually what I use, will control the X32 just fine. If you're new here, I'm Nathan from Crazy Amazing Designs. My goal is to train and educate leaders like yourself to do church and event production with excellence. I've got a wide range of videos here on my channel covering things like the X32 here, ProPresenter, live streaming. Consider subscribing and like this video. If you would like to get a copy of this cheat sheet, hang it on your wall or keep it on your phone. I'm going to put this in my X32 show file that's for sale on my website at crazyamazingdesigns.com. Alternatively, if you'd like to go deeper with the X32 or other production related topics, sign up for a training session with me and we can cover a wide variety of topics to get you more familiar with this system. The inputs tab is the first and all 32 console inputs are assigned here. Auxiliary inputs are also assigned here. You can see on the left we have the 32 channels. These are the X32 channels and along the top we have our local inputs, our AS50A and B inputs. We have our 32 card inputs. We have our user in inputs. So local inputs, those are coming from the back of your console. If you have an X32 compact, you're only gonna have 16 physical inputs. If you have a full size X32, you're gonna get all 32 inputs here, local inputs. AES 50 A and B, there's the two ports on the back of the console to connect up your stage boxes. Whatever port you connect to on the console, always connect to the A port on the stage box. Let's say you have a DL32, that's a 32 input stage box. You're gonna be able to select one through eight, nine through 16, 17 to 24, and 25 to 32. Now, if you have a 16 channel or an eight channel stage box, then you're only gonna be able to select like you have inputs for. There's four card sections, one through 32, and those are the USB connections from the back of the console, so connected to a laptop to send, and in this case, to receive the 32 channels from the laptop. User inputs, these are assigned on the very last tab, but we will get to that in a moment. Next, we have aux in remap. So I can go ahead and select different inputs to come into my auxiliary inputs page. So if I close out of the routing page, you can see here on the left side, I'm gonna to go to the aux effects. You can see my six auxiliary inputs here. And if I go back to routing, you can see on back on the inputs page, uh, aux in remap, this sets those six inputs on the console. If I select local one and two, then physical XLR inputs one and two are gonna go to aux one and aux two, but aux three, four, five, six are going to maintain the input from the original auxiliary three, four, five, and six. The next thing over, we have play and record. This is kind of interesting. I don't completely understand this or why it's right here. This feels like it should be a cue or a scene, but you can basically set your recording and your playback. So let's say we're gonna pull our inputs from our physical local one through 32, but then when we're gonna record, we're gonna record our inputs from card one through 32. And now I can switch back and forth, and you can also change if you want, for play, you can have your aux input set to this, and then for record, you can have your auxiliary input set to this. On this tab, you can also see the physical stage boxes or other consoles that are connected to this console through the connected devices through AS50A and AS50B. Let's go over to the AS50 tab. I like that both A and B are combined. This tab shows outputs to the stage boxes to their XLR connectors. So this has nothing to do with console inputs. All of that's dealt with on the inputs page. Now we're sending things out to AS50A to AS50B. So on the left side here, we can see our output to AS50A and B. So again, however your physical stuff is set up, this is gonna determine what's going to those stage boxes. Along the top, we have our local inputs that we can send out to outputs. We have our AS50A and B inputs that we can send out to outputs. So if I have, uh, you know, if I patch this to here, then one to one, right? The mic comes in, the mic goes right back out, port one. So the, technically, uh, if I plug in a microphone to input one on the AS50 stage box and I route it like this, I can plug a pair of headphones into the output one port and I'm gonna hear my microphone coming in now, if I wanna use something like a mix bus, I wanna send from one of the 16 outputs on the X32, I can come over to out one through eight or nine through 16, and now it's coming, I, whatever audio I have going in, on in that mix bus, that's being sent to here. So 
We have our local inputs that we can send, our AS50A and B inputs that we can send from our stage boxes. We've got our 32 card inputs, whether that is a, usually it's a laptop, an audio interface, or Dante connected to the system. We've got our 16 outputs, which we're gonna assign those 16 outputs on the out one through 16 tab. We've got alternate one through 16. Alternate is what we send to our P16 personal monitors. So we can send those inputs to here, which was kind of weird. We can send our auxiliary to there. We can send our, so we can send our auxiliary out and our auxiliary in to there. We can also send our user out and our user inputs to there. So we'll talk about the user stuff later. So let's go to the card page, which is next. And the card tab sends audio to the connected card. Default is the audio interface via USB or Dante. And this is return only. So this is where you decide what sources you're gonna to send to the 32 channels of the card. So I can go ahead and send, again, all of these sources from the top to my computer or to Dante from the X32. If you want to assign inputs from the card, then you're gonna do that from the inputs page. Okay, let's go to the XLR tab, and this is how we assign our local XLR output connectors. So again, on the X32, the full-size console, you have 16 outputs. On the X32 Compact, you have eight outputs, and this is gonna be our physical XLR connectors on this device. If you're connected to an X32 rack, you're gonna have eight outputs. If you're connected to a full-size console, you're gonna have 16 outputs. So we can assign all of our in our sources from the top, and we're gonna send them to our outputs on the left. Okay, let's check out the out one through 16 tab, and these are the 16 assignable outputs on the X32. Now, we can send our main left and right to any of these, but more than likely, we're gonna have our mix buses, one through, let's say, one through 14, being sent to our outputs, and then 15 and 16 is our main left and right, which goes to our outputs. Now, if you have a stage box with uh, only eight output ports, then it's more likely you're gonna do six outputs from here and then from the mix buses, and then seven and eight are gonna be the main left and right output going to the stage boxes. Fantastic. You can also assign matrixes from here. You can assign direct out channels, which is kind of pointless, direct out auxiliary outputs, direct out effects, and monitors you can assign to these outputs. The next tab is the out delay tab, and this is when you need to delay speakers from maybe a balcony. So let's look at output one here. You can adjust the delay in milliseconds. It's really nice because it shows you a feet, meters, and you can set a millisecond. So let's say it's 50 feet away, it's going to assign it to be a 44 point four millisecond delay. Now, this is why you need a laser, so that you can go to where your speaker is gonna be and then shine it at where your uh, delay speaker is gonna be, and then you can set the delay based on the feet or meters. Pushing this little button here is gonna allow you to turn the output delay on and off for every output on the console. Okay, that's pretty much that tab. Let's go to the aux output tab, and these are those six quarter inch outputs on the back of the, the console. So one through six, and then seven and eight are different. So one through six can be assigned from here, and you can again pick all of these different outputs, direct outs, matrixes, mon uh, mix buses, and then you can send the main left and right out if that works best for you. Okay, the next tab is our alternate tab, and this is where we assign sources to the 16 buttons on the P16 mixers. On the top, again, we have our sources, and we're gonna send these to our output. So 16 buttons on the P16, we're hopefully gonna label them well and have them ready and looking nice, and then we're gonna assign our sources to there. It's great because you can assign mix buses. I like to do that for our tracks, so I can assign group all of my channels to this one mix bus for tracks, and then send that to their ears. Uh, if you have house mics, crowd mics, it's really nice to uh, group those together and assign those to the ears. Uh, adding in a talk back, maybe you wanna group some microphones together. If you have not enough channels, but too many sources you wanna send, you could do like vocals one, vocal two, vocal three, and then vocal four is a group, a mix bus that has vocal four and a talk back or vocal four or five or whatever, however you need to do that. That is the uh, alternate page. The IQ setup tab is if you have speakers that receive signal over alternate. So you're connecting these via ethernet, the alternate signal, and you're sending content to them from there. 
I wanna mention one more thing before we look at the user in and user output. Let's go back to out one through 16, for example. On the bottom of the screen, you can see we've got these different things with the different colors. So post EQ plus mute, pre fader plus mute, post fader. And you can see that they're either solid or they're not solid. So if I right click on this, I can change any of these individual, whoops, I can change any of these individual channels, these sends uh, to be a different one. So that's kind of nice to be able to change it to like from pre fader to post fader. It's really important to know that that's how you do that. And you can also set the default signal type. I've never used that, so I decided to keep active tab. So let's go to the user input tab. And this is really important because it makes input routing per channel, not per block of eight. So my best example for using this is we play back multi-tracks on a tracks laptop, right? With every channel comes to the console on its own output. So when we don't have a bass player, for example, what I like to do is say, okay, what channel? Let's go to our one through 32. And let's see that 12 is bass, okay? So because all my inputs are set, well, they were until I changed it, because all my inputs are set from, to be coming from user in, whatever I assign, you can see there's 32 channels on the left side, and on the top is our sources, whatever I assign, that's what we're gonna get. So what I like to do is set these from my stage boxes or whatever, one to one, all the way to 32, and then if I am gonna play back my multi-tracks to play my bass, because we don't have a bass player, instead of having a dedicated channel for the bass player, I'm just gonna replace the bass with the actual channel bass is supposed to physically be plugged into. So bass is in 12, so let's go to uh, AS50 input 12 and console 12. So here's the stage box, here's this. Now let's go over to card 12, because we are gonna pull bass from Dante. So now we have our bass player tracks coming in via Dante and it's sending out the same, but it's now in the physical channel for the bass that the bass was supposed to be in if they were there. Confusing on first glance, but again, at the top is our source and on the left is our input to the console. So if you wanna set it one to one, the local input one, uh, console input one, and it shows you the input here. You can click on all these little boxes to move things around. So play around with it and it's a great tool for using the X32 as good as possibly can be used. Let's go to the user output tab, which is very similar. The top is the source, the output is the output. You can assign a bunch of different outputs. Go to the XLR tab, for example. If I set all of these to user out, let's say I set a user out one through eight to one through eight on the physical XLR connectors. Now, whatever I do here on this user out tab, this feeds that. It makes it really nice for being able to send very specific things to very specific channels versus before where we had to do things in blocks of eight. Well, hey, I think that's a high level overview of the X32 console from the M32 X32 edit software on a computer here. Thanks so much for checking out this video. If you have any questions about this console, go check out my other videos, leave a comment on this video, subscribe to see future videos, like this video, sign up for a training session if you're interested to learn more, get your setup rolling at crazyamazingdesigns.com. I'm Nathan, I'll see you in the next one, bye.